Shifting our focus for now, with less than a week to go before the 20th CPC Congress, President Xi Jinping kicked off the final meeting of China's top leadership. Around 370 members and alternatives of the Central Committee gathered to set the agenda for its upcoming Congress. Many of these members will be retiring by the end of the twice-in-a-decade meeting. Local reports say that President Xi Jinping delivered explanatory remarks on the draft report that will be presented at the Congress. While Politburo Standing Committee members like Wang Huning explained the draft constitutional amendments, apart from the personal changes and party charter revision, the Congress will also confirm the overall policy strategy for the next five years and beyond. The meeting will make Xi a step closer to shattering leadership norms by staying in power for over two terms, even defying the CPC's de facto retirement age of 68. Xi Jinping is 69 years old. Now for more on this, we are being joined by J. Pierre Cabesta from Hong Kong, who is a professor at the French National Center for Scientific Research. Welcome to the broadcast. Thank you. Now, uh, my first question to you is that some policies under Xi Jinping have affected China economically and even socially, like the zero COVID strategy. Do you think that these policies will be re-evaluated after the CPC meeting? I think it uh, it most likely be reevaluated, but I don't see any uh, major change uh, in the policy uh, regarding COVID-19 in the coming weeks. I think the change will be very slow and gradual because of the risks attached to lifting the uh, zero COVID uh, policy. Uh, uh, because China has, uh, as you may know, uh, a lack of. Uh, uh, medical facilities, a lack of hospitals in second tier and third tier cities, and the leadership is worried uh, that uh, a lot of old people who are not as well vaccinated, as often vaccinated as the young pe younger people, uh, be affected by the, uh, any change of policy. Right now, experts are also telling us that Xi Jinping is aware of the policies that have turned absolutely detrimental for his own people. But he is not willing to course correct. Do you think it is because he fears a potential opposition of sorts? Uh, it's hard to tell whether the leadership is divided or uh, united on this issue. Uh, I think that within the civil society, there is a lot of resentment, particularly big cities like Shanghai or elsewhere. Uh, you can see the urban middle class being uh, more and more uh, critical of this p policy. Now, whether it is going to convince the leadership to change remains to be seen. I think there will be some changes, but again, they will be slow and gradual and very cautious in the coming uh, weeks and, and months. So uh, now that's that's where we are, you know. In, and uh, of course, there is a cost to that in terms of economic development. But there are other reasons for the Chinese economy to slow down, the housing sector crisis, and also the tension with the United States. Right now, let's go back to 2012. You know, Xi Jinping coming to power had fueled hopes among at least the West that he may be a reformer of sorts. Exactly a decade later, do you think his tenure has lived up to that expectation? Uh, not at all, just the opposite. I think in terms of reform, China has gone backward. You can see that in spite of uh, the promises made in 2013 that the Chinese uh, economy will move towards the market economy, actually the state sector, the state-owned enterprises are still dominating the Chinese economy. The Communist Party have uh, shortened the leash on the private businesses, uh, setting up party committees in many large private uh, companies. And uh, you can see also China moving away from globalization uh, in, the, in starting to decoupling its economy from the rest of the world in developing its own technologies and trying to uh, also decrease the dependence of, uh, of the Chinese economy upon the, the, the outside world, in particular upon the West. Right, we'll leave it for that now. Uh, that was Jean-Pierre Kibestan live from Hong Kong. Thank you.